I would like to thank you all for coming tonight. And it, I must say it's a real privilege to have Mark um, hanging in our new gallery, which has only been open since August. But um, I would also like to thank Joseph Lebovic, who is Mark's dealer and friend and gallery owner. Now, for any of you who want in-depth information on photography and works on paper, I do urge you to speak to Joseph. It's a wonderful, entertaining experience, and you learn so much. And he happens to represent Mark and Rex Dupain, who's going to open the show. I have to thank Andrew Shapiro for this exhibition, because years ago, when I rented a space from him, he was talking to me in depth about photography, and I said to him, I don't know anything about photography, and he said, get over it, educate yourself, and mix with photographers. You will be well rewarded, and I am. And it's been a great journey. So I'd like to introduce you to Rex Dupain, and, but my introduction to him was as an artist and as a painter, because I used to do a lot of corporate artwork, and he had galleries, and I thought his paintings were wonderful, and I used to sell lots of them. And then I knew in the mid-90s he'd uh, gone more into photography, and I thought, well, I don't know much about photography, so I stopped watching what he was doing. But of course, he's published five books, and he's a wonderful, recognized photographer, um, internationally and in Australia. And uh, he has challenged the way we look at the world through his images. I know the last book of Bondi, um, they're just beautiful images which all everyone should see, and his images are at the Jeff Lebovic Gallery. He's also, in 2004, showcased, along with his father, um, an exhibition at the Museum of Sydney titled Rex and Max Dupain, Sydney. So I would like to introduce Rex, um, one exceptional photographer, who will hopefully introduce another exceptional photographer. Thank you, Francis. She says I don't need to stand up. It's true. Um, very beautiful gallery. that well, haven't been here before, but it's so nice to see a very clean um, get gallery full of clarity. We've got colour on one side, black and white on the other. Lovely snippets so you can actually not walk through but see the images on the other side. Um, I particularly like the industrial ones on this side uh, for the painterly references. That one of the switch is a bit like Rosalie Gascoigne. And this side here, we can all get seduced by colour straight away, but sometimes one tends to come back to the black and white. But having said that, there's some beautiful works here as well. Um, I've noticed on the catalogue there's no evidence of place, which I think is a marvellous thing because place really is irrelevant to a good photograph. But let me get back to Mark. We'll get back to his work in a sec. But um, what I find interesting about Mark is that basically we all know what he does. He's a criminal prosecutor. And um, we've had a series of lunches and we get on very well together. And one day I asked him, I said, Mark, would you love to chuck in the prosecuting and become a full-time photographer? And he said, no, I actually love my job. <laughs> I love my job. And... Um, with such sincerity, I thought, well, that, it puzzled me. I mean, most people want to ditch their nine to five job and get on with the real life, but he didn't. And um, one day he came over to lunch and, and we chatted about different things and you know, some of the big matters in art, like light and dark. And, and then he started talking about truth and lies. Well, that's interesting. And it started to make sense. The person started to gel. And, um, I mentioned that my partner, who's in New Guinea at the moment, had to do a, a, an expedition tour. She was the translator for uh, Pigeon English. Had to go out into the tribes and villages and talk to people and come back to the boat and relay what they said and about the food and so forth. And I said, well, just being a flippant photographer, I said, well, you know, you can tell them anything. I mean, who, who knows Pigeon English? And Mark was sort of munching a croissant and it was just like eating a child cough mixture or something, he's about to spew, like, this guy was a potential liar. <laughs> like, and I thought, this is really interesting. And I thought, what commonality is there between being a prosecutor and being a photographer? And I thought about it, it's all about the truth and revealing and gathering information and putting it forward and the details and certain things that are focal points, that are catalysts that can either make or break a case or make a picture. And it's all about information and seeing and observation and so forth. So I thought each um, 
the profession and the hobby or whatever it is, each sort of polishes the other. Anyway, that particular day we went out for a walk. We went down to Bronte. And um, we sat down and we had coffee. And as we sat down, there was a couple sitting opposite us. And Mark said, that's the sort of photograph I'd really like to take. And you know, these days there's photographers, there's photojournalists, there's photo artists, they call themselves. And um, this was a very photojournalistic, uh, very artistic shot. There was a, an Asian girl and there was a Caucasian guy. He was a little bit older than her, about 45 years or whatever. <laughs> um, she was slightly, she had more colour. She had a pink and orange from memory. He was greys and car keys. None of us had cameras. They were staring into each other's eyes and I was thinking negative thoughts about how many aunts and uncles will turn up and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, she reaches across to his hand and they're beautifully linked and they're holding hands across the table and we're just watching the whole thing. And um, compositionally, she was a little bit, a bit more left-sided because she had more colour and he had none, a bit like this exhibition. And, um, you know, we're thinking this is quite a symbol because these days you can't just take photographs of people you have to ask permission. And if you ask permission, you either get a contrived photograph or you get a no. Anyway, we're watching away and suddenly this fellow actually pulled his camera out. And I thought, this is really cheeky. We can't go up and ask him to take permission and also borrow his camera. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're sort of quite entertained by this. And compositionally, it wouldn't have actually quite worked because of the colour on her side. But when we actually stood up Luckily, Mark didn't have his camera with him because he would have incriminated himself as he stole the moment um, because there was a mirror above them and there he was in the mirror and it would have actually made a perfect photograph. Anyway, they paid their things and we left and that was the end of it. <laughs> but um, photographing these days is quite a complicated procedure in terms of being a street photographer. All these photographs are unrehearsed and I noticed about... What Mark particularly likes is he likes, with the prosecuting side of things, it's about truth. It's about authenticity. And this is a very long line of tradition of authenticity. It goes right back to the Roman marketplaces when they used to sell statues. So they'd ask them, did the statues have cement or didn't they have cement? And apparently yours sincerely is derived somehow from yours without cement or something. So authenticity is a very important thing. And Mark actually said once that in terms of light and dark and the truth and the lie thing, he said, there's actually, Rex, there's no such thing as darkness. And I thought, well, hang on, there is. There's light and there's darkness. He said, no, darkness, there's, it's just an absence of light, which is really quite interesting. And this, again, reminded me a little bit about his job and how they're really quite, these dual professions and hobbies go hand in hand. But anyway, getting back to the pictures, um, the authenticity in these pictures is ripe with truth. They're beautifully printed, a nice domestic size for anyone's house. And I'd happily open this exhibition and love to see more works by Mark. <laughs>